She's survived being hit by lightning. She's survived having her heart broken. She is <laughs> fighting fit at the beginning of the second series. She's doing all right. She's got some friends, which no one ever thought would happen. She's got this little band together that are, who are doing pretty well. What's their name? They've got quite a funky name. The Pink Cuttlefish Orchestra. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's doing all right. And then she starts to be sort of interested in where she came from and finding out about her granddad, um, Morris's father, mm. Felix Flower. Yeah, and that's where we find her. They're all struggling and they're all very vulnerable at the same time as being super strong and brave in their own different ways. And I think that they're, they're learning how to sort of be a family and make that okay and make that work and they, 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 they love each other sort of fiercely at the same time as having their own personal struggles and it's sort of a portrait of that universal sort of family story. Because there's that, there is, it's interesting you mentioned that because there is that feeling that a family should automatically be a tight unit unconditional love shown to one another at all times and this 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 family can't do that in some ways it's it's incredibly british in terms of how repressed they are i think a lot of families don't don't t talk a lot because it's sort of like like you say it's um expected that you just get along mm. and you're sort of you, do, you don't need to work at it but i guess it's like any relationship it's sort of a work in progress. So everyone's learning how to be in that um, group, in that family. You've got, you've got, you're working on quite a few things at the moment. Yeah. Paul Fee, you've been working with, what difference was, was working on a piece like that with him as opposed to some of the earlier um, sort of, uh, parts of your career? I mean, was it, did you notice a different energy on set when you have a, a Hollywood director? Well, we were in LA. So that was different yeah. because it was warm. You know what? It's quite similar. The actual set and filming, and you know, it's 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 quite it's quite similar. People are kind and nice, and it's it's not as intimidating as they would have you believe. Did you did you had you kind of built it up? It was going to be oh my gosh, it's going to be. This is well, I didn't be... really get a chance to. I I had no build up. I just got there and had to do it. Oh okay. It was one of those things where. I did a tape for it and then flew to LA to do a screen test and then I got the job and I had to stay and they, I couldn't come home so I had like an overnight bag and <laughs> ended up staying for five weeks. So it was all a bit, um, but it was fine. So you had an overnight bag and stayed yeah. for five weeks? Yeah. How, much, how did you react when they said, oh, by the way, don't get the flight home? Where can I buy some knickers? <laughs> was my reaction. It was that first question? <laughs> yeah. When are we going to see that then? When are we going to see... Well, it was only a pilot, so I'm not sure yet. Okay. haven't heard yet, so I don't know. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Do you now carry a bag containing five weeks' worth of underwear with you at all times? In yeah. Case... I'm tr yeah, in case... I'm traumatised by the experience. <laughs> I worry that I'm not going to be able to go home. Yeah. I think it has actually uh, traumatised me in a good way.